A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Dear brothers and sisters Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh uh, I am Fatima Barakatullah your usual host with um, the Ilmfi podcast uh, many of you may know me from the Ilmfi podcast and today I'm at home on this uh, Facebook live session uh, and as I'm sure you're all aware, um, we're all kind of at home at the moment. We're all trying to either self-isolate or um, do the right thing, be responsible um, during the uh, COVID-19 pandemic that has gripped not just the nation, not just Britain, where I am, but the world. And um, so in light of the current situation and in light of some of the challenges that families like mine and yours are facing all over the world i thought that this would be inshallah a beneficial session for us to have you know um, a little space perhaps for us to think about to reflect on and to come up with some insights and ideas about how we can um, keep our families strong and the, the well-being of our families in these challenging times. So, I don't know how it is in the, in the part of the world that you're in, but here in London, um, certainly, you know, it's been about a week. Uh, things were fine, you know, it's, life was going on as normal uh, in my own family. I had a son who was about to do his A-levels, right? A-level exams, which is what you do before you go to university. Uh, another son who was about to do his GCSEs, which are what you do before you do your A-levels. Um, so everyone was really poised for action. You know, literally the next, in the next few weeks, there was a big build-up uh, coming for the final exams. As a university student myself, I had exams i had an essay to hand in you know everything was all very meticulously planned as i'm sure things are in your life as well um and then suddenly suddenly or at least it seemed as though it was all of a sudden we hear this news and our whole reality our whole kind of normal suddenly changes um and <clears throat> for my family at least, some of the changes that have taken place and I'm going to share them with you so that, you know, hopefully by sharing this, um, you can see that we're all in this together, really. SubhanAllah, you know, um, the GCSEs got cancelled, <laughs> A-level exams got cancelled, um, schools closed, uh, people were told if you have a cough, or if you have, you know, any kind of flu symptoms, especially a cough or or a fever, that they should stay at home, they should not mix with people, self isolate, um, and then the members of their family as well, the members of their households, for fourteen days should also stay at home, All right? Um, <clears throat> slowly but surely, restaurants have closed. Um, we're being told not to go on the London Underground. Uh, everything that was normal to us, everything that we took for granted, that perhaps we never even thought about, suddenly uh, was kind of pulled from under our feet. Now, I think that's how a lot of us are feeling, you know. It does feel as though the structure, the, all the things that we put, that we have around us, you know, that we take for granted, suddenly that rug is, has just been pulled from under your feet. And you're now looking at everyday mundane things and asking yourself, what's the new normal? You know, how am I supposed to respond to this? How will my family adapt to this? And then we hear that, you know, these lockdowns and these um, the self-isolation and this new kind of social distancing and these measures will take place perhaps and, and need to take place for weeks, if not months, subhanAllah. 
And I can only imagine the impact that it's having on your family um, based on some of the impact it's had on, on my own family, right? Um, something else that's really been heartbreaking for Muslims, for us, is the fact that the mosques, you know, have had to cancel Jum'ah prayers, um, have had to prevent gatherings. Um, some of them have even closed down, right? Like literally closed their doors. Um, some mosques, you know, a small group of brothers will carry on praying um, just to keep the symbolism of the masjid alive. Um, all of those kind of measures, you know, seeing the haram empty, it's heartbreaking for us as believers, right? Subhanallah, the masajid are empty, the houses of Allah. What, what is this? What is this thing that we're experiencing? What is this ibtila, right? This test that we're experiencing that, that means that we have been kind of denied um, the houses of Allah, subhanallah. And I know that <clears throat> like me, and my family, your family will be impacted by all of this, you know, and I'm sure you might have had a wobbly moment or two, <laughs> especially in the early days. I know I did. And, and that's to be expected because subhanAllah, we're human beings. We're human beings. We like certainty. We like things being put into boxes, into categories. We like, we like knowing what's about to happen and what's happened. We like routine. And so when that routine is kind of pulled away from us for a moment, we're like, where do I stand now, right? It's kind of like a loss of status almost, right? SubhanAllah. Um, <clears throat> some of us will be not feeling very well. Now that's another obviously important element in this. You know, I, I myself, I was ill last week, um, so I had flu symptoms, uh, I, I believe it, it was just, you know, a cold. But because I had cough and the flu symptoms, I I complied with um, Amir al Britani Inn, <coughs> who is uh, uh, Boris Johnson, right, and his advice, which was to stay at home for seven days, um, and then obviously 14 days as well. Uh, so when we're not feeling 100% as well, you know, we've, we're feeling ill or family members are ill. We can't meet, you know, maybe our elders um, who we meet every week, family members, extended family, you know, cousins, all of this, it's all been impacted. And then the, sh the shops, you know, the panic buying. Uh, this kind of irrational panic buying that suddenly started taking place, right? Uh, the, I mean, I remember going to a shop and needing to get some essential things and literally shelves being completely empty, like not even one thing left on some shelves, right? Um, so it's, it's bringing out a weird kind of um, rawness to people's instincts, right? This instinct to survive um, and overreact, actually, you know, to to some of. The and I can imagine that, like me, you've had moments where you felt overwhelmed. You know, your children are looking at you for answers. Um, everyone around you is relying on you, especially if your mom or your dad, right? You know, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us that all of you are shepherds and all of you are responsible for your flocks. And the man is a shepherd over his family, right? The, the, the woman is a shepherdess over her household, her husband's household. So naturally, there is a type of leadership that's needed from every single one of us, right? SubhanAllah. So in this session, I hope that we can just start um, thinking about some of the ways that we can powerfully respond in this difficult time, right? Because there's two ways to respond to any situation, my dear brothers and sisters. You can either be reactive, right? 
and respond with your basest instincts, your lowest desires, your lowest self, right? Or you can respond powerfully. You can respond in a way that empowers others, empowers yourself, and is true to the nature of being a believer. And that's what we want to do, right? So the first idea I want to share with you, and the first thing I think after the kind of initial shock of everything being closed and suddenly, you know, my children feeling kind of left completely uh, without structure and, uh, you know, things being cancelled, lectures going online and everything just changing. After the initial shock, I think the question that I was really asking myself, and I, I invite you to ask yourself this question as well, is what can I be grateful for? What can I be grateful for in this situation? Because subhanAllah, dear brothers and sisters, we have so much to be grateful for, you know? Okay, so, so the structure has changed. So there's a new normal. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, we are alive. We have the gift of life. Alhamdulillah, we are safe. Our families are safe. We have means of communication. SubhanAllah, just, just look at this. I mean, I'm speaking to you uh, from my home in London and there, there are gonna be thousands of you all across the world who can hear what I have to say. So this idea of social isolation isn't really a hundred, it's, it's not really the type of isolation that people in the past would have had to experience, right? We have running water, alhamdulillah. Um, we have all our basic needs met. We're safe. You know, it's not a situation of war. Can you imagine what it would be like if a war broke out? SubhanAllah, you know. So I think it's really, really important for all of us to, to just really think about what there is to be grateful for and to highlight that to our children as well. Because, you know, we live in a time where we're encouraged to complain a lot. We're encouraged to have a kind of a complaining culture, a culture of calling people out, a culture of, uh, you know, shaming and telling people what they're doing wrong and complaining, complaining and complaining, right? But what about the beauty that's around us? What about the, the blessings that we still have? Let us draw our own attention and our children's and our family's attention to those, to those beautiful blessings. You know, I was watching a documentary and I encourage you to go and watch this documentary. It's on YouTube, I believe, and on BBC iPlayer. It's a BBC documentary about the Spanish influenza, right? Which was not Spanish, but <laughs> for some reason it was like called the Spanish influenza. Um, <clears throat> it took place in around 1918. So like a hundred years ago, right? Um, and it was a pandemic. It spread all across the world. And it was right at the tail end of World War I, which meant that hundreds of thousands of people, right, of soldiers died. Um, and this was a hundred years ago, just a hundred years ago. And just watching that documentary, you'll see, subhanAllah, what a difference a hundred years has made in terms of the advancement of science, of human understanding of viruses and pandemics and, you know, subhanAllah, and the ability to respond. The fact that a hundred years ago, there was no national health service. There was not even a ministry of health, right? And SubhanAllah, things have changed and we are so blessed. We are so blessed, dear brothers and sisters. Let us be cognizant of that. Let us not lose sight of the blessings that are around us and the things we have to be grateful for. So really the first question I would ask you to ask yourself and to bring forward in your family, right? To bring this up in your family and talk to your children about is, what can we be grateful for 
Alhamdulillah. Then say Alhamdulillah. Say Alhamdulillah from the bottom of your heart. A true Alhamdulillah. Praise be to Allah for those, for those blessings. The second <clears throat> question that I want you to ask yourself, and this is a difficult one. It's not easy to ask yourself this question, but it's so important. And that is the question, how can I be a role model in this situation? How can I be a role model in this situation? And I know there'll be times where you don't feel like being a role model. You feel like falling apart. You feel like having your wobbly moments, right? Fine, you know, you're a human being. We all have those wobbly moments. But for the believer, subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what did he tell us? Or what did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tell us? He said, wondrous is the affair of the believer. Wondrous is the affair of the believer. His affair is all good for him. Because when he's tested, he's patient. And that's good for him. And when things are going well for him, he will be grateful, right? And that will be good for him. So as believers, we've got to ask ourselves, how can I be a role model in this situation? SubhanAllah, reflect on our mother, Umm al-Mu'mineen Khadija radiallahu anha. Just reflect for a moment on her and the things that we praise her for, dear brothers and sisters. What do we praise her for? We praise her and we recognize her for being the one who stood by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam through thick and thin. Who, although she lost her worldly status, subhanAllah, right? She was like a celebrity. She was like, you know, like the princess of her time, right? Of her, of her town and her city and her people. And by, um, by standing with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and his message, what happened to her? She suddenly lost her status, right? Her worldly status. Now, can you imagine how that must have felt? You know, that feeling that we're feeling of the rug being pulled from under us. You know, that it, she experienced that times 10, times 100, right? Where her family were literally boycotted. Her family are targeted. And through all of that, what was the quality that Khadija had that was just so amazing? Khadija radiallahu anha, she was the pillar of strength in her family. She was the one who kept, who held the fort, right? She was holding that fort, dear brothers and sisters. When people around her were losing their heads, right? Literally were not able to, 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 to comprehend what was happening, you know? And there, there was a time even when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself couldn't fully comprehend what was happening. She was the one who kept her cool. She was the one who asked herself, what is the correct next, next step? She was the one who took him to Waraka bin Nofal, right? SubhanAllah. So I ask you and I ask myself, can we honor our mother Khadija, truly honor you know, the legacy of those great companions of the Prophet وسلم, and our messenger and follow in their footsteps by being true role models in this situation? Because whether you like it or not, dear brothers and sisters, you are a role model. You're a role model. You're a role model to your kids. They're watching you. Society around us is watching us. History, history will judge us, dear brothers and sisters, regarding how we respond in these next few weeks, in these next few months, right? Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator, is watching us. And he'll recognize every single act that we do act of being a role model. So I ask you, brothers and sisters, to ask yourself, how can I be a role model in this situation? You know, and, and in order to do that, you might need to distance yourself a little bit from the continuous media coverage, you know, of the situation, right? 
just distance yourself a little bit. You don't need to check up on it every minute. <laughs> Believe me, you don't need to, okay? It ain't gonna change because you keep checking up on it every few seconds, right? Perhaps have a time in the day when you can, you know, check up uh, just to know what's going on, what the latest advice is. Definitely, you know, do that and follow the latest advice. Um, but don't be continuously plugged into it. Don't become obsessed with it, right? Um, and that's necessary. That kind of little bit of distance is necessary for us if we are going to be role models, right? In this situation. <clears throat> How can we be like Khadija Radilana? How can we keep our heads when everyone around us is losing theirs? <clears throat> the third uh, question or area that I would like you to reflect on in responding powerfully and helping our family well-being in this situation is you know brothers and sisters this is when the theory of our knowledge comes up in and 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 uh, manifests itself as action right yeah you say you believe in allah i say that i believe allah is in control right i say i believe that allah is the rub allah is uh, Allah has the greatest um, names and attributes. We will say that with our tongues. But it's situations like this, dear brothers and sisters, in which the reality of our Iman needs to shine through. The reality of whether we really believe those things that we say we believe are going to come out. So bring that theory that's in your head all that theory, all that studying, all that, all those courses, all those wonderful lectures that you've studied and all that knowledge that you have, let that now come forth as action. Let it manifest itself in, in the reality around you, right? Let the people around you feel it. And <clears throat> so I ask you, you know, what is the reality of your Iman? Do you really believe that Allah is in control? If Allah is in control, then what do you have to worry about? What do you have to be obsessed about? If there's anything good that was meant to come to us, it will come to us. You know, perhaps your plans have been set back a few months, maybe even a year. And for some people, you know, maybe their plans have been changed completely forever. But it was always ever thus. Yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had written this. And if there's anything that you're meant to achieve, you will achieve it. You might not achieve it in exactly the same way that you had wanted to achieve it. But if Allah has written it for you, you will achieve it. Have no fear of that. You know, whatever was meant to come to you will come to you. Whatever blessings, whatever goodness. And when we say we believe that, you know, after hardship or with hardship comes ease, we say that with our tongues and it's in the Quran. Do we really believe it? Are we living that reality in the way we're responding to this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, dear brothers and sisters, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْسٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ He says, and we will test you. We will of a surety test you. There is so much emphasis in this phrase. وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ With something of fear. You're not going get to get away from this life without experiencing this, Allah is telling us, right? Something of fear. You're going to experience times of fear. Waljuri and hunger. Wanaqsim al amwali wal anfus thamarat. You're going to experience a loss of some sort, right? A loss in your wealth, perhaps. You know, people are upset because the stock markets are affected. Uh, prices of things are being affected. There's so much uncertainty regarding their jobs. And loss of lives. Some of us are going to experience 
people in our families who will lose their lives and our loved ones. Wathamarat and the fruits of our efforts, right? Perhaps you were working on a project and suddenly now it's canned, it's been canned, right? Perhaps you were working towards your GCSEs, your A-levels, and you, you really wanted to prove yourself. You were going to get those A's. <laughs> you were going to get those A stars and those nines. And now everything is going to be based on your mock exams and things that you perhaps you didn't work your best towards, right? SubhanAllah. A loss. It's a type of loss, right? وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ Allah says وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ and give glad tidings to the sabirin, the patient but who, who are these patient ones? الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ those sabirun and remember when we say sabir somebody who is patient Allah, Allah is saying, give glad tidings to the patient. Patience here doesn't just mean quietly curling up and, you know, allowing this experience to wash over you. That's, that's not what we mean by patience. Sabr means continuing to obey Allah through this hardship. It means continuing to stay away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's prohibitions through this hardship. And it means continuing to be a believer, continuing, patiently persevering, powerfully persevering, dear brothers and sisters, and being the sort of person who, when a difficulty, a calamity befalls them, you might have your wobbly moment, but then you bring yourself together and you remind yourself and the people around you, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. We belong to Allah anyway. Whatever He is allowing us to experience, we belong to Him anyway. He can do what He wants. SubhanAllah. And it was ever thus. We only had the illusion that we were in control, right? We only experienced the illusion that we are in control, my dear br brothers and sisters. In reality, Allah was always in control. That rug that was under our feet, it was put there by Allah. The structures around us in society that we hold on to and we feel so safe because of those structures, reality itself was all put there by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? And so we remind ourselves that inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. To Allah we belong and to Him we're all going to return. This life is not forever. And it never was going to be forever. It doesn't matter whether you thought it was going to be forever and whether you were living as though you're going to live forever. The reality is that me and you, dear brothers and sisters, we belong to Allah. Our lives belong to Allah. Our children don't even belong to us. Our children belong to Allah. And it's times like this <clears throat> situations like this that suddenly even the most atheist of atheists right is forced to take a look and realize that actually someone else is in control you know things can change for you in the blink of an eye right a tiny virus a microscopic being that you know, scientists don't even know if it's alive or dead, right? It's kind of a category in between life and death, life and um, object, matter. SubhanAllah, you know, such a tiny, tiny, tiny object, such a tiny being, Allah can send it and cause the whole world to shut down. Who is all powerful, dear brothers and sisters? Subhanallah, who is all powerful? Who can change our situation, dear brothers and sisters? In the blink of an eye, it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these situations, they show us, they prove to us 
that subhanallah, it was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who was keeping things afloat. It was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who was keeping the structure in place. And if he chose to take any part of that structure away, we suddenly feel so insecure. Look how weak we are as human beings. Look how needy we are. We need Allah. We need Allah. We need our creator. And so, <clears throat> dear brothers and sisters, allow all of that knowledge you have about Allah, all of the aqidah you have, all of that iman, let it manifest itself. You know, the proof is in the eating, right? The proof of the pudding is in the eating. It's, it's in your actions. The proof of your iman is now going to come out. So <clears throat> put that theory, that aqidah, that knowledge, that iman that you have, let it come out and let it um, inform your actions and your words in this time. The fourth idea that I would like to share with you, dear brothers and sisters, is, you know, in every single setback, there is an opportunity as well. Depends on how you want to look at it, right? In every setback, there is an opportunity. I want you to ask yourself, how can me and my family, how can we benefit from this time? What opportunities have presented themselves in this time that perhaps weren't there or we weren't very cognizant of because of the fact that we're so busy in our usual structures of life, right? Um, and you will see, dear brothers and sisters, that opportunities have opened up for us as believers, as Muslims in this society to serve, opportunities to reach out to our neighbors, you know, opportunities to build bri bridges, Opportunity actually also to focus on what's really important. Don't you feel sometimes, brothers and sisters, that when we're living the busyness of life, right, the rat race, subhanAllah, you know, literally every day crammed into these tube trains on our way in these little boxes, whizzing through the city, right? That's what our lives become. Don't you think sometimes we lose sight of the important things? We lose sight of the beautiful things around us, right? We lose sight of what's important. And so this is a time for us now that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forced us all, forced us all to slow down, forced us all to kind of change our normal everyday life, right? Your modus operandi has to change now, right? Isn't it a great time for us to start thinking, actually, what's really important? What does my family actually need, you know, in order to spiritually feed ourselves, mentally feed ourselves and keep ourselves afloat and thriving? I've seen brothers and sisters be very, very resourceful in this time, you know. SubhanAllah, my, my son usually has a halaqa which some brothers do in the area. And instead of cancelling the halaqa, because, you know, um, we shouldn't be gathering socially in that way, they actually went on Zoom online and they, they had the halaqa online as like a, a giant conference call type thing, right? You could do that. Perhaps this is a time when, you know, we can't meet our grandparents, our parents, Maybe we can start instituting a online family halaqa, right? Where literally each household, you know, maybe if you've got siblings, cousins, etc., each household dials in and one person, the elder of the family, maybe grandfather, maybe somebody else, can hold a halaqa at least once a week, right? And just as a reminder for everyone, for everyone to continue to feel connected. This is the time for that, dear brothers and sisters. Start your own online family halaqa. And just think, just use your own resourcefulness to think of ways that we can actually benefit from this time, right? <clears throat> One of the things I plan to do is, you know, 
Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us with the internet, right? Can you imagine going through this without that kind of social connection via the internet? I mean, it would have been even harder, right? Um, I'm planning on perhaps getting a online tutor and, you know, revising, revising some my Quran or getting something like that set up for my children, right? Um, just think of all the ways in which you could change the way that you're going to go forward and perhaps even benefit from this situation, right? And find even better ways to carry on doing the things that you were doing, but also to do even more. And realize that one of the ways, brothers and sisters, you know, we always want to teach our kids lessons, right? We buy them books, we tell them stories, we try to drum certain values into them. What could be better than this kind of real life situation to help build resilience in our children? You know, because SubhanAllah, this is kind of a once in a lifetime type experience. And if they can go through this and we can help them see their way through this and help them be strong through this, right? Because, you know, life, the world, you can't protect your children from the world. You can't protect them from the trials and the suffering of life. But what you can do is you can help build their resilience. You can help them to be more courageous, increase their level of courage, their bravery, their resourcefulness, right? If we can help our children in this time to build their resilience, then it would have been an opportunity to, for them to learn something that later on in life, when we're not there, brothers and sisters, and we're not going to be there for our children forever, they will have the means, the tools within themselves to deal with the challenges and the trials of life. This is the opportunity. This is like, you know, you have on the job training, right? This is on the job training. This isn't theory anymore. It's, it's reality. It's life. And we get to teach our children on the job. Then the other question I want you to ask yourself in this tough time is, what should I be learning? you know, from, from the lessons of what we're experiencing. What could I be learning? What could my family be reflecting on? What is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pointing out to us? SubhanAllah, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us or we can, re we can see from this situation our utter dependence upon Allah, our utter dependence upon Allah. You know, it's a time when we could reflect and think about taking full responsibility for our sins. You know, brothers and sisters, we commit sins day and night, small and big. How many times do we repent? How aware are we? How self-aware are we? You know, what are those weaknesses? We make so many excuses make so many excuses for not obeying Allah. Why do we do that? And then we expect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep blessing us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us with masajid. He blessed us with our lives. He blessed us to live in, in safety and security. And how do we respond? We disobey him. We use the very resources that Allah gave us to disobey him with those very resources. And we expect there to be nothing but goodness in return, right? Brothers and sisters, this is a time for us to repent. This is a time for us to ask Allah to forgive us for our shortcomings, for our spoiltness. You know, subhanAllah, we are spoilt. We really are spoiled especially those of us who live in the West, you know, sometimes we, we act like spoiled brats. And, and we need to realize that it's a type of ingratitude. Dear brothers and sisters, this is a time for us to repent, time for us to be introspective, 
fix up brothers and sisters, fix up your household, fix up your own personal life, your own household, your family, and then from there onwards, fix up your community. We need to become people of Toba, people who make, who repent to Allah. We won't stop making mistakes, but we can become sensitive to those mistakes, right? And then we can fix ourselves so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not angry with us. <clears throat> so ask yourself, dear brothers and sisters, what should I be learning? What lessons should I be learning from this situation? And take responsibility for your shortcomings. Take responsibility for the sins and the things that are not right in your family and, and start to fix those up. The sixth idea that I want to share with you, dear brothers and sisters, is you know, when the structure and the routine of life has been pulled away from you, you've got to create your own structure. So use this time to be resourceful, create structure, create a routine for your family. You know, human beings thrive from routine. We even have an inner kind of a body clock, right, that runs on routine and it likes routine. So dear brothers and sisters, dear brothers and sisters, please create a routine for your family. You know, it shouldn't be the case that your kids are waking up every day and staying in their pajamas all day, right? And you as well, right? Create that routine, even if you're having to stay at home. Yes, we're gonna have a certain time when we wake up, there's gonna be a certain time for breakfast, right? There's gonna be a certain time for, everyone has to be ready by X o'clock, right? Uh, we're gonna have a timetable. Okay, make it a flexible timetable. It doesn't have to be extremely rigid, but having some kind of timetable. And dear mothers out there, you know, subhanAllah, we have to be so organized. And I often say to sisters, make family your finest project, dear sisters. Make family your finest project. You know, the best businesses and companies, what happens when there's uncertainty, right? they're able to adapt. Uh, the CEO will call in a meeting, a family meeting, right? And they'll have a family meeting and they'll discuss how they're going to get through this tough time, right? How are they going to get over these massive waves that are crashing against them? And the best businesses are the ones who are able to adapt and then get through the hardship and come out the other side. And they may have changed during that time, but they're so adaptable and, and resilient that they come out and sometimes they come out even stronger, right? Well, dear sisters, dear brothers, you are the CEOs of your families, right? Our families are like a company. They're like a project, 100%. In fact, they deserve more attention than the average business or project, right? So if you're the CEO of your family, you, you should be having a family meeting, right? Just like the CEO would be having a family meeting, would be having a meeting with his team, right? And pulling everyone's uh, best resources together and getting everyone to realize the challenges that are lying ahead and remind everyone of the vision of their family. Have you ever talked to your family about your family's vision? What is all this about? What's all the effort that you keep putting into life about? I would encourage you, dear brothers and sisters, if you haven't already done it, to have a family meeting and to spell out what is the purpose of our family? What is the vision of our family? And I would encourage you to make your vision the pleasure of Allah. We want to be a family that pleases Allah a family that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is happy with, that serves Allah's deen on this earth, and ultimately a family who will go to Jannah. That should be the vision of our families, the, the most essential vision. And then there'll be specific things that your family cares about that you can mention in that meeting. Realign everybody in your family with that vision 
so important, dear brothers and sisters, because the vision of your family acts like a, a guiding star, right? That you can look to when there is chaos all around and it will continue to guide you, right? Continue to motivate everybody and to realize that, you know what? This too shall pass. This too shall pass doesn't feel like it at the moment you know it feels like it's gonna last forever subhanallah may allah protect us may allah protect us but actually you know one day we're gonna look back at this time we're gonna say hey do you remember that virus remember that thing that happened and yeah subhanallah it will just be a little blip a little blip in our lives you know at the moment, it doesn't feel like that. But one day we will look back, dear brothers and sisters, and we will ask, and people will ask, our grandchildren will ask, how did you respond when that virus thing happened, when that pandemic happened? So, <clears throat> dear brothers and sisters, create structure, create routine, realign your family with its vision, right? with your family vision and have that family meeting. And you might need to have that family meeting regularly to keep everybody aligned, right? To remind everybody what's gonna be needed of them now in the next few weeks and months. The seventh idea I'd like to share with you, and I'm hoping that you're finding these ideas and these thoughts to be things that are kind of like mindset shifts that could help you and your family with your well-being is you know <clears throat> we need to listen to our children and help them through this help them think through this um i don't know about you my uh, my own daughter found it very difficult to accept that school has suddenly been closed right she's not going to meet her kid her friends her teacher um and subhanallah you know for children that can be very difficult it can be very difficult for them to accept um, and I, I can only imagine what it must be like for kids who were in year six, which is the year before they leave school, um, to now not even have had a decent goodbye, right? And they're going to be going off to big school. SubhanAllah, you know, our, our children, they, you know, they have hearts. They, they feel the emotions, um, the, the, the loss of friendship, the loss uh, of, uh, and, and, and the huge impact of change you know so it's really important that we give them a chance to speak we give them a chance to tell us how they're feeling to tell us um how this whole incident is occurring for them do they actually understand what it is do they understand what it's all about you know they might have some misunderstandings actually about what's going on because they've been exposed to the news and etc but they might have fears it's really important that we give them that space, um, a little bit of time every day to talk to them, let them reflect on what, what's bothering them, you know, and help them see through it because isn't it the case, dear brothers and sisters, most of the things that we get worried about, most of the things that we're, you know, we overreact to, although we act like it's the end of the world, are things that actually it's, it, it's the stories that we tell ourselves about those things, right? So if we were to tell ourselves a more empowering story, right? If we were to interpret events in a more empowering way, we could see through those events in a more empowering way. And that's really um, the tool that we want, we want to gift our children with, right? We want them to be able to see through this in a powerful way. So. <clears throat> Again, that's not going to happen unless we give them a chance to talk to us, to express to us um, how they're feeling and help them think through their problems and find solutions to those problems. And hopefully that will serve them throughout their lives. Um, also to, to reassure them, you know, dear brothers and sisters, you know, we shouldn't be the panic mongers. No, we should be the ones who will say to our kids, you know what, it's okay. 
School's going to open again, inshallah, a little way down the line. How can we use this time? Remember that thing that we always wanted to work on? Let's, let's do that. Remember uh, that area that we were neglecting or those books that we've always wanted to read? Let's focus on those during this time, right? Um, the eighth idea that I want to share with you is, dear brothers and sisters, use this time to increase in your ibadah, increase in dua, in calling upon Allah. Some of you might have seen a little um, a podcast clip uh, on the Unfeed podcast clip channel, I believe, or could be on the Unfeed uh, YouTube channel, um, in which I was talking about how my mother taught us all about Allah through dua, right? Dear brothers and sisters, gather your families together. This is the time for dua, right? Gather your family together and raise your hands. Let your children raise their hands. Teach them how to talk to Allah. Do you know, brothers and sisters, there are so many Muslims that you meet who don't know how to talk to Allah. Can you imagine what a loss that is? They have never been taught or they, they, have, they just never, no, nobody has ever modeled for them. How do you talk to your creator, right? One of our teachers, subhanAllah, may Allah reward him, he used to say to us, when you talk to Allah, when you cry to Allah, when you ask Allah for something, you should ask him like a two-year-old, right? SubhanAllah. And what he meant by that is, you know the way a two-year-old will cry and will not let you go until you give him what he wants. And the two-year-old knows that you can give him the thing that they want, right? And they'll do anything. You need to be like that. You need to be crying. You need to be a broken person. Come to the door of the king, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, begging him. But so many of our brothers and sisters, when you ask them, or when they think about ask, talking to Allah, they don't know where to start. Do your children, dear brothers and sisters, know how to talk to Allah? Because... You know, subhanAllah, we prepare them in so many ways for their futures. Maybe we've set up an investment fund for them. Maybe we've got these wonderful savings. Maybe we're gathering up some gold for our daughters, you know. We make so many preparations for their lives and their futures. But guess what? There's a helpline that they have 24 hours a day, seven days a week, that they will be able to access when you're not here, when I'm not here anymore. And that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And can you imagine if throughout their whole childhoods we've never taught them how to talk to Allah? Can you imagine what an, what an act of neglect that is? SubhanAllah. So dear brothers and sisters, hold your hands up with your children. Teach them how to talk to Allah in your language. Yes, in your language. In English, whatever your whatever you know the, the main language of the family is, talk to Allah in that language. Admit your mistakes. Make toba. Show your children how to make toba. Show them how to call on Allah by His names. Oh Allah, you are a Razak. Oh Allah, you are the one who who gave us everything. You're the one who keeps this universe running you designed this universe you, you you even created creatures that subhanallah that i can't see but that can affect human beings in such a profound way you know teach your children how to repent teach your children how to praise allah and then teach them how to ask allah without any barrier without any shame so many brothers and sisters are too ashamed to speak to Allah because they feel like they've sinned so much they don't know how to turn back to Allah what a shame what a shame that they don't know 
that they can always turn back to Allah, that we are in need of Allah every single day, dear brothers and sisters. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us that during this time, dear brothers and sisters, that whether we admit it or not, we all need him. We all need his help. And it was ever thus. We always needed him. Even when we're acting in an arrogant way, even when we're using the very resources he gave us to disobey him, dear brothers and sisters, we still needed him and we still needed his mercy. So dear brothers and sisters, use this time for dua. Allah is forcing us to call on him. You know, we neglect calling on Allah. We call on everybody else. Everybody's looking to their leaders. Everybody's looking to and complaining about their prime ministers. They're complaining about the doctors. They might be complaining about the health system. But this is not a time for complaints. This is a time to go like a broken person in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and beg him for your mercy, for his mercy. Beg him for his mercy. So dear brothers and sisters, use this time to make dua, to gather your children round, to teach them how to talk to Allah because that's one of the greatest blessings, one of the greatest teachings you could teach your children and that will serve them for the rest of their lives. Increase in Salah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he was in a time of difficulty, what would he do? He said, the coolness of my eyes is in the Salah. Dear brothers and sisters, turn to the Salah. Turn to the Salah. Establish the Salah in your house. Let there be somebody making Adhan. Let there be somebody leading the Salah. Let there be uh, collective salah, salah that you all pray in jama'ah together. If it wasn't something you were doing before, now is the time to do that. And see how that act of praying together is going to bring your hearts together, dear brothers and sisters, bring the hearts of our families together. <clears throat> the ninth area that I want to highlight for all of us, dear brothers and sisters, in this difficult time is, dear brothers and sisters, you know, when you're experiencing a trial, sometimes you need to stop thinking too long term and start focusing maybe on the next month or the next week, getting through the next week, getting through the next few weeks, right? And your time span kind of shrinks and you need to start focusing on the smaller, smaller time span, right? When things go back to normal, hopefully, inshallah, you know, you can change and start thinking long term. But right now, there's a certain level of short term thinking that needs to take place. And sometimes when we're immersed in that trial or that test, we can stop looking for joyful things. So brothers and sisters, during this time, make sure your children, your families are having fun. Make sure that you take advantage of the, of the beauty around us, right? I know that in Britain, for example, uh, the National Trust has opened up parks for free and gardens, right? Yes, we're supposed to keep our distance socially from people, but we can make the most of the open air, right? Especially if we don't have illness in our families. Um, we can go out, we can, in, in those kind of spaces and keep our distance from people, at least to carry on having exercise um, in those kind of open spaces, obviously according to whatever the uh, latest advice is. And we can carry on looking at the beauty around us, finding joyous, pleasurable things in everyday life, you know, taking a little moment to ourselves, um, whether it's for, you know, um, something fun to do with the family, uh, playing a game together as a family, um, 
don't use this time as a time where you forget the joy, dear brothers and sisters, because there are joyful and beautiful things all around us all the time. If only we would notice them, right? Maybe it's time we opened our eyes and noticed the most fundamental and most beautiful things that are around us that we take for granted, right? <clears throat> so please, dear brothers and sisters, use this time to infuse joy. Be, be the person who your kids feel positive around, right? Not the person who's always snapping. And yeah, we, we all have our weak moments, but it's how we recover from those weak moments. We always have a chance to, to apologize and to make fresh commitments. So dear brothers and sisters, please don't zap the joy out of life in these next few weeks, right? Try to find ways of being joyful, whether that's bringing flowers into the house, whether it's making a, a, a nice family meal, just the simple pleasures, playing a game together, reading a book, allowing our children to have boredom as well, you know? It's okay to be bored. Some of the greatest ideas in history have come about probably because of some bored kid, right? <laughs> Somewhere thinking, sitting and thinking and reflecting. So, <clears throat> so dear brothers and sisters, let's be a source of joy in our families. And the 10th idea or thought that I really want to leave you with dear brothers and sisters is, you know, sometimes when you're taking care of everyone else, you forget that you're like a powerhouse, right? A power plant. Uh, if you're the father or the mother of the family, you're a power plant. You're the generator of the energy in the house, right? And the power plant needs, needs to be taken care of too, right? So please do take time to take care of yourself. Do take time to take care of your own needs. Uh, people call it self-care, you know, whether that means you need some private time every day to yourself. Carve that time out. Tell your family members you need that. You know, whether it's just to have a, a, a quiet coffee and a book or whether it's some kind of treatment, beauty treatment or a health treatment or something that you need to do just for yourself to keep your own sense of well-being up. Remember, you know, when you're on an airplane and when they're doing that little thing at the beginning where they're telling you, you know, if there's an emergency, what do they say? They say, put the mask on to yourself first, the oxygen mask, before you put it onto your child, right? Why? Because, you know, if you start putting it onto your child and you're choking yourself, you know, you're not going to be much use to your child, right? So we need to take care of ourselves as well. We need to become very um, kind of sensitive to our own needs and our own, own mental well-being. So I ask you, dear brothers and sisters, to think how you're going to be feeding your mind, how you're going to be feeding your thoughts and mind over the next few weeks. Because you could fill your mind with negativity. You could fill your mind with complaints, with the news, with the, the onslaught, really, of negative news that is just going to be around us, right? Or you can feed your mind with positive things, with enriching things. You know, have you ever studied the seerah of the Prophet Well, maybe this is the time for you to do that. And the resources are all there at your fingertips. You just need the discipline to do that, right? Have you ever um, used uh, the, you know, the, the, the resources around us to fill your mind with a new thing, some new skill that you could learn? Brothers and sisters, think about these types of things and take care of your mental health by taking care of what you're feeding your mind, right? Because our minds are very open to suggestion. If you fill them with negativity, they go into this kind of fight or flight mode. And that has a physical effect on us, right? 
So brothers and sisters, please take care of the, your own minds. And I do encourage all of us in this time to, you know, to reach out to our elders um, in, in different ways. If we can't uh, physically visit them, at least we can keep in touch with them. Uh, make sure we're not just lost in our own little worlds. Uh, reach out to your neighbors, uh, whether that's through a little note that you can put through their letterbox or just by telling them, you know, that you're there, um, asking them if you're ever going shopping, if you need to get, if they need anything. Uh, acting in a responsible way, dear brothers and sisters, there's no need for hoarding and stockpiling, you know, <laughs> stuff for Allah, it's the worst of human nature that comes out, you know, when we go into this kind of fight or flight mode. Um, we don't need to be in that kind of mode. You know, we are believers, dear brothers and sisters. Can you imagine how blessed we are that we have Allah in our lives? If we didn't have the bedrock of Iman, where would we be, dear brothers and sisters? So, Alhamdulillah ala ni'matil Islam, wa kafa biha ni'ma. And with that, my dear brothers and sisters, I'm going to leave you. I hope that some of those ideas and insights have got you to start thinking about ideas and insights that you might have to benefit your families and the well-being of your families. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us emerge from this trial stronger, better, more joyous, more full of light, having repented, having been forgiven, having made new commitments, having built new bridges, and having a fresh appreciation for the masjid, for our institutions, for our elders, and a newfound awe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's power. And with that, I will leave you, my dear brothers and sisters, and bid you farewell. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. May Allah bless you and bless us and help us through these difficult times. Ameen thumma ameen. Ya Rabbil Alameen.